How many sides does a circle have? Some people say that a circle has infinitely many sides and infinitely many corners. Some others say it has only one side and no corners. A few people think that the question how many sides does a circle have is too ambiguous to have a definite answer. Well, but we all agree that a square has exactly four sides and four corners, right? Does a circle have infinitely many sides and corners? How about half circle? Is this point a corner? What is the angle? Is this point not a corner? Does this part have infinitely many sides? Is this part only one side? What do we mean by a side and a corner? How many sides do they have? Given a 2D shape, perhaps not a polygon, but a shape like a circle or a Rulox triangle, can we tell at all the number of sides and corners it has? To be able to answer the questions, of course we need to have a definition of what we mean by a side and a corner of a two-dimensional shape. In this talk, I propose how we can define them using a calculus approach. We begin with the fact that a two-dimensional shape may be viewed as an area enclosed by a continuous plane curve which is closed and does not cut itself. Each point on the curve may be a corner point or a member of a side. But in some cases, it may not be a corner nor a member of a side. The two-dimensional shape beside is supposed to have infinitely many sides and infinitely many corners. One remaining question is about the origin, the point 0, 0. Based on the definition that we shall formulate, it is not a corner nor a member of a side. For each point on the curve that encloses a given shape, we determine whether the curve has a tangent line at the point. If so, then we say that the point has rank 1. Otherwise, it has rank 0. So this point has rank 1, and that point has rank 0. Of course, it is not always easy to decide whether a curve has a tangent line or not at a given point. If the curve can be parametrized by a vector function gamma of t, which is equal to x of t, comma y of t, then we need to examine whether or not the function is differentiable at the point. Another way to claim that the curve has a tangent line L is by showing that the limit of the distance between q and q star divided by the distance between p and q star where q tends to p is equal to 0. Where p is the point of examination, q is a point on the curve near p, and q star is the projection of q on L. So imagine p, which is of rank 1, is there, and q and q star around that point. For example, for a square, each of the four corners has rank 0, while all other points on the curve that encloses the square have rank 1. So this point cannot be approximated well by any line. Meanwhile, on a circle, every point has rank 1 because we know that the tangent line exists everywhere on the circle. Looking back at the 2D shape shown beside, it is clear that the origin has rank 0. But is it a corner? We would like to call a point that has rank 0 a corner if the curve has a left tangent line and a right tangent line, but they do not coincide. At a corner point, one can then compute the exterior angle as the angle formed by the right tangent line and the left tangent line. Depending on the orientation of the curve, sometimes we have to compute it as the negative of the angle formed by the right tangent line and the left tangent line. In general, the exterior angle alpha lies in the interval where the absolute value of alpha is between 0 and 180 degrees, including 180 degrees. 
Knowing the exterior angle, one can obtain the interior angle as the supplement of the exterior angle. Here, the interior angle may take any value from 0 degree to 360 degrees, except 180 degrees. If the left tangent line or the right tangent line does not exist, then we do not call such a point a corner. We just call it a vertex, which we distinguish from a corner. As an example, the origin in the figure beside is a vertex. Now how do we define a side of a 2D shape? First, we define an equivalence relation between two points of rank 1. Two points of rank 1 are said to be equivalent if one can trace the curve from one point to another without passing through a point of rank 0. By a side of a 2D shape, we mean equivalent classes of points of rank 1. So in this picture, A and B are equivalent, but A is not equivalent to C. There are three equivalent classes here. So what is a side? Using the above definition, we see that a square has four sides and four corners, while a circle has only one side and no corners. How about the Rolox triangle? It is clear that the Rolox triangle has three sides and three corners. As an exercise, the reader can compute the interior angle at each corner. It is now clear that the figure beside has infinitely many sides, infinitely many corners, and one and only one vertex, which is the origin. With the previous definition, one may find an example of a 2D shape which has infinitely many sides. Some of them may have length zero. Yes, it is possible. Just observe the construction of such a shape here. The point on the tip is an equivalent class but consists of only one point. So we have a side of zero length by our definition. So to sum up, we classify points on the curve that encloses a 2D shape as follow. First, we have rank zero points, which can be a corner or a vertex. Then we have rank 1 points, which can be a point on the side of positive length or a point on the side of zero length. 2D shapes are getting more interesting now. To finish this talk, let us consider the Cox snowflake, a shape which is enclosed by the Cox curve. You can see the literature for its construction. By its construction, we can conclude that the shape has no sides and no corners. All points on the curve have rank zero. Moreover, at each point on the curve, the left tangent line and the right tangent line do not exist. The clock snowflake is surrounded only by vertices which are not corner points. What a weird shape. Thank you for your attention.